I thought, you know, we, we would once again generating open shots and we start the game three for 15 from three. Um, so that's demoralizing. You know, it's, it's frustrating when you're able to, you know, create the offense you're looking for and you don't get the payoff. So there was a lot of frustration with that. Um, and I thought it affected our efforts and energy, our focus on the other end. Um, you know, the second half of that third quarter, obviously the whole fourth, um, that was kind of the, you know, hey, desperate times, desperate measures. But it's good that we, you know, stayed the course and just kept playing. We, we could easily just said, you know what, not our night. We just throw in the towel. Um, so it was good to see us respond, finally make some shots, try to get some stops, uh, continue to play together, try to play the right way, um, get, at least give yourself a chance. We could have cut it to four, you know, obviously didn't happen, but still a ball game. Shots went in. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not, I'm not being funny. Um, we had a string of possessions. We, far, we finally started to make shots. And, you know, it's frustrating because, you know, you're, you're trying to get Brad going. But once again, teams are going to put pressure on him. They're going to be up and be aggressive and make him a facilitator. He did that most of the game, and we finally got the payoff. Once that happened, it starts to loosen up and, and open things up for, you know, other people. Yeah, I think it could. Um, and you know, once again, we, we have to find a way to get those two on the same page and, and get them both, you know, uh, aggressive and playing well on the offensive end. That's been a struggle for us. And I think it's something we really have to kind of hone in on and figure out because there there are, you know, two of our best players. And we bo we, we need them both to play at the, uh, the highest level and be the best version of, of themselves. Um, maybe both, honestly. Um, he loves to play in pick and rolls. I want him to play in pick and rolls and be aggressive. I want him to attack. I want him to uh, get downhill. I think that's where he's at his best. Um, you know, I think there's got to be purpose behind it. You know, we're, we're not just going to play static pick and roll every possession. But you've watched us play enough. It's the bulk of our offense turns into a lot of pick and roll. So um, that type of action has been good for us. We have to find a way to kind of get them going early, get both those two on the same page and, and, and productive. He is shooting a higher percentage of his shots, I guess, at the rim compared to earlier in the season. But is that where it maybe you talk about either volume or, like you said, like the purposefulness? Yeah, I think the more the purpose, purposeful part. Um, he can get there, you know, probably whenever he wants. It's just, is it the right time? Are people in the right space? Um, does he have the right angle? Um, so all those things. But I think still one, he, he's trying to search out and be a facilitator, which is fine, but you still got to play your game and be aggressive. All right, we'll go to Chase. Hey, Wes. Um, one more on, on Dinwiddie. You know, he just played so well to start the season. Uh, what has changed with him? Is there something that defenses have recognized that they're taking away? Not to my uh, knowledge. Um, you know, that's it, the season in general. You know, there, there are going to be lulls in, in how everyone plays. So I'm hoping this is just a, a brief lull for him and we can get him back on track. Uh, but there's really no significant way as, as far as coverage or even uh, what we're running. So it's uh, kind of a mystery. But um, I mean, I said to the group, obviously, we were desperate to get back in the game. We're down 33 points. but um, our energy and purpose, the latter half of the third and into the fourth is how we have to play from the start. Um, you know, it got a little hectic, but hey, that's the game. Um, we have to read the flow of it and, and take what, uh, what we can get. And can you draw a positive in uh, the way that Davis Bertans played, considering uh, he's been kind of wait waiting for a game like this? Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, anytime I uh, see the ball go in, I think it's good for shooters. Uh, obviously, there's no moral victories, but you know, it's a small glimmer of hope that, well, you know, things are going to turn for him and hopefully for us in general. Neil. 
And coach, you, you said, you know, repeatedly throughout the season, you know, shots didn't fall and we let it impact other parts of our games. How can you try and change that for a team when you're kind of in this extended rut? Is it anything you can say is just hope that, you know, one day they start falling? Well, it's not a hope. You got to, I've said it before, you got to aid in your own recovery, get in the gym, shoot. You know, it, it's not, it's not going to just happen. Um, you know, so we got to spend time doing it. You got to get game shots, uh, the shots you're going to get in the offense. Um, you know, the timing, the setups at game pace, all those things. It's, you know, you have to continue to do that. Just like anyone else, work on your craft. So we have to spend time, you know, and it, not only in practice, but we have access to facilities. So, you know, in downtime or um, days off, there's another opportunity. You know, I don't think that's uh, um, a big ask. You know, most of our guys do that. So that's why I feel confident that eventually it will, you know, tip in our favor. And I think a couple of games ago, you said anything's on the table when asked about, you know, any lineup kind of changes. Do you anticipate, you know, shaking up anything this road trip? Uh, it remains to be seen. It's the first game. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Thanks, Coach. Matt. Hey, Coach. Um, with Brad, uh, you know, you mentioned Spencer's kind of shot selection and wanting to be aggressive. What do you think from Brad and – how do you kind of evaluate his, his selection? Say that last part again, I'm sorry. How, how do you evaluate uh, Brad's kind of shot selection with all the attention that he's getting, but playing in kind of the rhythm of that and his overall kind of selection? No, it makes it tough. Um, you know, he's seeing multiple bodies every possession. So he's not going to get clean looks. Um, you know, we're going to run offense through him, and he's going to make the right play at times. You know, he, he'll be able to facilitate and score, but – you know, because he's going to see so many uh, different schemes and, and so much attention, at times it's tough. He's not going to get the open drive and kick threes. Um, you know, that's where on misses, we got to run with pace, get to the corners, open the floor. Uh, we saw some of that, you know, late in the game. But um, it, it makes it difficult for him. And I know he's he, at times frustrated, but, you know, that's something he's got to work through. Um, you know, I think it's it's it'll lighten, I think, when – you know, he does make those reads and guys make shots. That will help ease some of the tension on him. And then, um, you know, he's faced the tension, extra attention from defenders before. Um, it, how much of this is kind of him adjusting to a new system as well, you know, figuring out? Kind of uh, the yeah, I think some of it. Um, I, I, I don't know, it, you know, if there's a, a number or a percentage. Um, but I'm sure that's that's part of it. You're playing with new teammates. You're playing within a new system, um, and I know it's been you know 26, 27 games for him. But you know that's not a lot of time. I know I keep saying that, but it's not. You know it takes it takes a while. I can look across you know the other end, and th that's now seven years. So you know the way they move and, and spatially, uh, they've got some different pieces, but it. It took time, so it's not an overreaction. Obviously, we, we want to play well every night, but um, no, I keep that in mind. It's it, it'll tip, I promise. Christos, hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. Speaking about uh, Dinwiddie, did you see any kind of, of difference or any kind of change about on his confidence uh, through the season so far? Uh, that's probably a question for him. I mean, I can't really judge a guy. Um, he doesn't seem like it's a confidence issue. Um, I think he's just trying to search how he fits this group, um, the combinations, how he can impact, you know, uh, that starting group is probably, you know, something that's weighing on his mind. But I, I just want him to play free, um, be aggressive, you know, don't overthink it. You're too good. Uh, so. That's kind of the, my message, and I think he's smart enough. He's been around long enough to understand um, how to facilitate, get his, his teammates' looks, and when to be aggressive. Um, I just need to see him do it. Thank you very much. Last question to Jim. Hi, Wes. Uh, Jim Conlon here, RCB Radio Sport Ireland. Wes, with about one minute and seven seconds left on that clock, it was a seven-point game, and KCP took on a difficult three with an awful lot of time left on the shot clock. Did you like that look, or do you feel there was another play in that? Uh, I mean, at times, you know, 
you know, once again, we were trying to play with pace, get up the floor, and look for the best look, the quickest look, given the uh, situation. Um, you know, I'd have to kind of look at the film to, to tell you exactly whether or not that was a good shot or not. He's bailed us out with shots like that all season. And obviously, he's a shot maker. Um, he's made big shots. So uh, to answer your question, I'd say uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Um, I know it might not fit, hey, the prototypical time and place, but we had momentum. You know, we had a, you know, kind of, uh, we had them on their heels for a count. So, uh, you know, that one shot, if it goes in, could tip the balance. You know, so it's a, it's high risk, high reward, but it's one I can live with. First praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, we uh, we played the way we should have played at the end of the game, the whole game. And me personally, um, it was more or less about opportunities. Um, you know, more or less how they regard me early on and throughout the course of the game and. In the third quarter, I, I moved all my ball screens and every every action up high. Like everything else was low, everything else was compact, and they packed the paint and forced me to be a playmaker. In which we just didn't make shots early on in the game. Like we made the right plays. It was just we just weren't making shots. Um, and it was kind of like the course of that throughout the whole game. You know, we just we made the right play, we made the right play, we just couldn't convert. You know, and then you know we give up some some tough ones on the other end. You know, threes and Jokic. Jokic kind of um, <clears throat> doing what he do, uh, but more or less how we ended the game is how how we gotta how we gotta compete. Yeah. You're so good at kind of finding your way through like the smallest spaces, but when you guys as a team are kind of off from offense, do you feel like you have like space to kind of maneuver and move around because there's there's no like one person who's drawing attention? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, because it's. Every every night, every team is going to game plan. Okay, how do we make Brad pass the ball? You know, that's that's every team's game plan. Uh, that's not a secret. Like you can, every scouting report is going to say that. You know, how do you get Beal to pass the ball? And a lot of teams are going to pack up the paint. You know, they're going to force me to throw it to our bigs. They're going to force me to skip it weak side. And, but I trust my teammates, and I'm going to continue to make those plays. I'm going to continue to make those passes. Um, we just we just got to convert uh, and be better. And I got to convert. You know, and be more aggressive. So, um, you know, it's just tonight it just didn't fall. But I think we made the right plays and we were aggressive. Um, but we we definitely took some steps back on the defensive end. I will say. Um, Wes has said to us that you and Spencer kind of have to get on the same page. I'm sure he said the same thing to you guys. What do you kind of interpret that as? Uh, I think just us both being aggressive. You know. Um, that's, that's pretty much all I can point to, uh, you know, whether that's a scoring or us playmaking. Uh, you know, we, we, we definitely we got to play a little bit faster and we got to we got to be a little bit more aggressive, you know, uh, attacking the paint, you know, attacking to disrupt, you know, attacking to cause havoc, you know. Um, but, I don't know. How long does it take? That's a tough question to answer. Honestly, I've had so many teammates in my career. I couldn't. I couldn't. I really couldn't give you a timeline on that. Um, every player is different. Every relationship is different. Every um, kind of makeup of a duo or whatever you want to make it out to be, it's 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 different. Um, and it's not just Spencer. It's the whole team. You know, it's not just one guy that we're adjusting to. You know, and it's not just me and Spence making the adjustments. It's everybody. Um, it's the staff too. It's everybody. It's, it's everybody from top down. We are all making an adjustment, um, you know, together. And it's it's taking time. Like it's, it's it's taking time. Granted, it's it's everything's highlighted now because we've we've definitely we've lost some in the rope. Um, but you know, it's I think it's definitely fixable. You know, it's, it, they're all fixable problems. You know, it's just 
we just got to get it done. You know, we just can't talk about it. We just got to do it. For sure. Um, when, you, when you evaluate the defense, how much is that in your mind that the defense doesn't have your chance to quite be at its best? Mm, it's kind of an excuse in a lot of ways. Because um, regardless if we're making shots, regardless if anything is going your way or not, you know, we always say it. We, you still can control your defense. You know, you can control your efforts. You can control communicating. You can control boxing out, you know. Uh, you can't always control making shots. You know, that's one thing I always say. You know, if we could, we'd be 100%. I always say that. Um, but more or less, you know, we can control our energy on defense, our talking, communicating, uh, and be a lot better on that, you know. But like you said, it is tough when, you know, we're turning the ball over or, you know, we're not getting good shots or, you know, it's long rebounds out to, you know, it leads to transition. So it's tough when we're not you know, putting pressure on them and, you know, making them take the ball out. Um, it, it becomes, t it definitely becomes tough because you feel like you're on defense all the time, you know, so we, uh, we got to change that, you know, nobody's going to feel sorry for us, you know, nobody's going to, any of that, you know, we got to, we got to fix it. Yeah. Neil. Right, you've, you know, come out and said this before that, you know, how we played in a certain part of the game is how we should have started. How does that change when you guys have, you know, had this extended stretch of that seemingly becoming a reoccurring problem? Uh, I wish I could really pinpoint that for you, Neil. I don't know. Um, you know, obviously our approach to the game, us as starters, we have to be better. Uh, you know, we can't come out and be down 10, 12, down 15, 20 points every first quarter. Um, you know, so we, we just, it's on us. We have to be better. You know, we, we have to be better. And, you know, it's really tired of talking about it. You know, we gotta, we gotta show up, you know, we gotta go out and produce and do what we're supposed to do, um, as a unit, you know, it's not one person going to win us the game, not one person going to, you know, save the team. Like we have to do everything collectively and, uh, so it's on us as starters, you know, we see, like like you just said, like we, we have glimpses where we'll go on a big run, like the end of the third and the whole fourth, you know, we're playing the right way, we're playing with energy, we're playing with force. That's how it needs to be the whole game, you know. Um, but why, I couldn't pinpoint that. I don't know. And I know it's a small sample size, but Denny in his two starts, how have you seen him play in, you know, what's maybe a point of emphasis you tell him if he has to continue to start? Uh, I mean, he's done well. I think Denny's biggest thing is he has to understand everything's going to be thrown at him. Like, everybody's going to attack him. You know, everybody thinks he's young. Everybody thinks, you know, he's – we're kind of just throwing him in the fire. But, um, you know, Denny has heart. Denny has – he has a – he plays ex super hard, you know, and, and that's what I love about him. Uh, but he has to understand that the, the game is going to move a lot faster uh, when he's starting. We're going to ask him to do a lot and require him to do a lot. Uh, but, you know, we're there to uplift him, you know, in every way. You know, he's been doing a good job. He's been holding his own. Um, and I got to do a better job of continuing to lead him, um, encourage him. Uh, but he's he's been doing good. He's been good. 